Hey there cinephiles, today I wanted to get into why Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio is actually pretty damn good. And for those that don't know, earlier this year the Disney Plus live action remake came out too. Safe to say that it was horrific and therefore didn't really make me excited to see another Pinocchio retelling just a couple months later, let alone from another streaming service too. I should have known better because this came from the vision of someone who actually dabbles in magical realism and has heart in his filmmaking. For those that don't know the name of Guillermo del Toro, he's done Pan's Labyrinth, Pacific Rim, and won Best Picture with The Shape of Water. Although generally he is a hit or miss filmmaker for me, he still has some darkly whimsical aspects to love about his films. The vibe of his works very well for Pinocchio's story, as to me this is now the definitive version. Sure, the Disney one has When You Wish Upon a Star, but this one has Mussolini, and why not teach kids the horrors of that fascist early on. Seriously though, in general, this film does a great job of balancing some darker real-life themes and the whimsy, child innocence, and curiosity that Pinocchio has. For as magical as this film can be, there's still this realism and grit that grounds the film too, and I think will allow for it to age very well along with the many children who will end up watching this on Netflix when it comes out. The beginning that almost made me cry beautifully teaches the meaning of loss and the dangers of wartime. It's so well told and has this maturity in its telling that I think would do wonders for a family watching this film. I also wanted to state that this is a musical. There's no song quite as catchy as When You Wish Upon a Star, but you get to hear Ewan McGregor belt out a tune as Sebastian J. Cricket, so that's a major plus. It's great to hear him sing in another film besides Moulin Rouge. Funny enough, he plays a writer in both films. Wonder why I connect with them so much. Let me touch on Pinocchio as a character himself. Gregory Mann brings such life to the wooden boy. From the highs to the lows of emotions, he just nails it for Pinocchio. There's a constant state of wanting to learn and wanting to experience, but then just as a normal kid, he's not fully aware of his emotions and surroundings and how to control them yet. He must learn and grow, but he becomes very open to it and is genuinely a good person. As for Geppetto, David Bradley brings this depth to his character and you feel the weight of loss through his vocal performance. Going from losing his son to gaining one with Pinocchio creates such a beautiful arc for Geppetto. It's rough and bumpy and he himself has to learn to navigate these heavy emotions that he's going through as well. And when Geppetto and Pinocchio are on screen together, you get lost in their connection and root for them to be father and son happily ever after. They're both showing how no matter your age, you still have to grow and feel new things, no matter how devastating it may be. The surrounding characters are actually voiced by pretty big stars. Not to give any away, as they certainly surprised and delighted me with who played each side character, but when you find out who plays Spazatura, it's pretty cool. Getting into to the stop motion of it all, it just makes sense for the character Pinocchio specifically. I mean, he's a boy of wood. Overall, the film is visually striking, and I'm so lucky I got the chance to see it on the big screen in its near full glory. As this is a Netflix film, I know the vast majority of people watching this film will be at home, so please watch it on the biggest screen you have at your house. The story does deviate from more well-known tellings of Pinocchio, and I think that works for and against the film, at least on a first-time watch. There was a sequence that I was excited to see Del Toro's take on, but it never came to pass and therefore took my mind off the film for a bit unintentionally. However, what he ends up doing makes much more sense in the context of the film, so it does work out. Overall, this is the version of Pinocchio for me. It's a creative and beautiful telling of the story that has some darker edges to it that will allow for children to grow an appreciation for this as they grow up and revisit the film. I give Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio a 3 out of 5 stars. Despite much of its wonderful craftsmanship, the film is a bit overlong, and as much as I appreciate the man's work, there's always been a disconnect for me for Guillermo del Toro movies. At the end of the day, it's a taste thing, and I don't know what causes this rift between me and Guillermo del Toro's movies. Either way, I still recommend watching this film when it comes on Netflix as it's truly worth watching, especially since I have a feeling it'll be in strong contention for the best animated feature Oscar when the time comes. Let me know your guys' thoughts on this version of Pinocchio down in the comments below. Even can talk trash about the Disney Plus version if you'd like. Please be sure to follow us on our socials. As always, thank you guys for liking, commenting, and subscribing. Stay tuned for more Yeti Films content, and I'll watch you later.